Hello, Thunderdome. It's Spoopy. Um, and this is Buffy. This is my cat. So I wanted to talk to you guys today about pets and mental illness. Um, Buffy here saved my life. She's not going anywhere. Um, Buffy here saved my life. Um, in the spring of 2017, I had a miscarriage and a surgery that gave me uh, PTSD. And within that month, I rescued Buffy. Um, she is the sweetest cat when she decides she wants to stay in my arms. And she decides she doesn't want to stay in my arms right now. Um, but Buffy saved my life, as cliche as that sounds. Um, whenever I was dealing with the aftermath of a miscarriage, my body thought that I gave birth. And so I always wanted to hold something because of, uh, the maternal instinct that happened. And she's right here. She's so cute. Um, but so the maternal instinct kicked in and I needed to take care of something. Um, <clears throat> my instance is a little bit different than a lot of people. Um, because I, um, my hormones was what caused me to want to take care of something. Whereas a lot of people, when it comes to mental illness, they need to take care of something. Um, whenever I struggle with depression, sometimes I, um, don't care about hygiene. I don't care about a lot of different things. Um, I remember in undergrad that I was depressed. Um, it was nowhere near HVZ week and I needed something, but I didn't know what I needed. Um, I lived in the, the dorms, so I was living alone and I just really didn't have a support system. Um, and so whenever I was dealing with depression there, I, um, would go a week without showering. I would go a week without brushing my teeth. Um, I would go a week without a good, healthy meal because I did not see the point. Um, so whenever all of that happened, like whenever my miscarriage happened after I graduated, I, um, got Buffy and I get to hold her and I get to take care of her. And cats are pretty easy to take care of because all you got to do is litter box food and water. Um, and then cuddles, right? Just don't ignore them. Right. Um, but she saved my life because I was taking care of her. So I needed to take care of myself. Um, so Buffy is what's called an emotional support animal. Emotional support animals are our, um, are, uh, prescribed by a doctor. Um, for like mental illness. Um, so I have an emotional support animal, which is Buffy right here. And my roommate also has one. Um, and it's her emotional support animal is a little Corgi called Sassy. She's so cute. I will post videos of Sassy later. Um, but not today because I'm talking about Buffy, but Sassy goes everywhere with me and Bay. Um, because Sassy is an emotional support animal. She gets to go into most places. Um, some restaurants don't really allow her, but that's up to the manager. Um, Bay struggles with a lot of anxieties and stuff like that. And so having Sassy around comforts her. It, it tells her that, you know, everything's okay because fluffy corgis are here. Um, and Sassy is trained so there's a difference between just bringing your pet everywhere and having an emotional support. Um, because Sassy is trained in doing that. She is trained to calm Bay down if she is to have an anxiety attack. Um, Buffy is an emotional support animal too, but obviously she's a cat, so you can't really train her. Um, I have a little card for Buffy. Uh, this is what the card looks like. It uh, says her name, her birthday, her breed, which is orange tabby cat. Um, and the date I registered her, my name, and a little picture of her because she's cute. Um, <clears throat> but basically, I, if I do need to take 
Buffy with me on a trip, such as an airplane or a train or anywhere, basically with public transportation, maybe buses. Um, it's not really public transportation. But anyway, if I do need to take her with me, I have um, that is my evidence that I can take her because she is for a purpose. Um, pets are wonderful. And in my mind, I don't think that there's a difference between like real pets and emotional support. Um, because if you own animals, I can name several people who I know are watching this that own animals and they've helped whether or not they are registered as emotional support animals, they do help. And everybody knows what service animals are just regular service animals. They are for a specific medical purpose, uh, such as blindness, deafness, um, seizures, uh, any kind of disability like that, whereas emotional support animals are for men mental reasons. Um, obviously I can't take Buffy everywhere on a leash, um, because this is Austin and there are dogs everywhere and she's a cat. So, um, but when I do come home, it's really nice to have Buffy who is now cuddled at my feet. Um, oh, she's cute. But so Buffy really did save me and just know that if you are struggling with mental illness, um, and you have a pet, you may not know it, but it is helping you. Um, let me just let me you're taking care of it and not ignoring it. Um, but I just wanted to talk about pets and how they do help. And I know that a lot of you have experienced this. Um, but yeah, so just know guys that you are on this journey and it's okay if it's hard. It's okay if you don't feel like it's worth it. Um, I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it is okay. Life happens, and I'm going to quote Mr. Rogers on this, um, but life happens. And it's okay to have feelings. It's okay to be sad. That's a part of life. Um, it's okay to be happy obviously. Um, but just know that your feelings, other people do feel them too. And I'm not saying that other people feel them. I'm not trying to like make your pain less real. Cause that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this to say that there are people who understand what you're going through and pets may not be able to completely understand you, but you can, you can, um, take care of the pet. You can understand the personality of your cat or your dog or your goldfish. You can understand them. And when you focus on something else for 30 seconds, just 30 seconds at a time, you'll be okay. Thoughts are passing and again, it's okay to feel what you're feeling. It's completely fine. I promise. And what I was talking about, I, what I was talking about yesterday was, um, how it's okay to have bad days. It's okay to have off days, but I've noticed that my off days are a lot fewer and a lot far between since I got Buffy and she is my loaf and sometimes my scarf because she's cute. I love her. No, no, stay, stay. Okay. She's, she's still here. She's still here. She's still um, but she is, she's adorable and now she's attacking my hand. So before I draw blood, I'm going to let you guys go and I will see you next time. Um, so it's okay to have a bad day. Pets help. Pets save. Pets save lives. Um, let a pet rescue you.
um, just as long as you're within the financial means to take care of an animal. Because I would hate to say, get an animal and then you just not be able to take care of it because of finances, because I've been there. Um, when I got Buffy spayed, I uh, had to ask help for help to pay for it. Um, and a lot of people were just like, yes, because it's for a pet. Here you go. Um, but I also live in like Lubbock, Texas, and everybody has animals there. So I'm not sure what like the culture of your city or anything like that, but I was able to find, um, financial support to take care of her, but a lot of people aren't able to. So I would hate to tell you to take, to get your pet and, you not be able to financially take care of it. And then you're just like, but that one girl on YouTube said, um, but yeah, so you guys are awesome. And I want to hear your stories of your animals that have saved you in the comments. I know a lot of you have animals, um, but a lot of you do have the animals that have saved you. And I'd like to hear about it. I, I really want to hear the stories of your pets because I like to talk about my cat. I like to talk about any animal that I've come in contact with. And so I want you guys to share your stories. I want to hear from you because I like hearing stories about animals. But anyway, um, bye Thunderdome. I will see you next time.